I always wanted to get a tattoo in this country, but I certainly didn't want it to be this one. But I just feel like um, both Afghanistan and Sardar will always be. Many consider this luxury hotel to be one of the safest spots in Kabul. But late Thursday, Taliban gunmen stormed the Serena Hotel's restaurant, killing nine people, including prominent journalist Sardar Ahmad, his wife and two children. All four shot point blank to the head. Afghan authorities say the four gunmen hid guns and ammunition in their shoes to evade security. We are still waiting for, uh, for all those investigations to take place. Journalism او به نیم کارش میخواست که در جامعه جهانی در افغانستان دفع مانه کرد. انسان هایی که در یک کشور زندگی میکنه با عرضش هست. بعد از اینکه سردار ما را رها کرد و رفت، من احساس میکنم که یک زندگی فقط میخوایم که زنده باشم. میخوایم که نفس بکشم. توانایی ازید من ندارم که قبول بکنم که سردار نیست. This is Sardar and these are things that I got um, his boss at the AFP let me have a few things from his desk. He had this really weird cute love of pine cones. One time he was like hold out your hand and so I did and he put a pine cone in my hand. I think it was this one actually. He was really into the free AJ staff thing in Cairo. And we had a day here where we all went to the Al Jazeera bureau. But Sardar missed it. And so he came to my office and he had me take a picture of him holding this. And it's like now like a widely used photo of him. So I don't know, I feel like trying to find out what happened to him is maybe would bring some closure. And is, I don't really know what else to do. There are so many unanswered questions. As per usual, the Taliban claimed responsibility, but we think there's more to the story. Sardar is, uh, he was a well-known guy in mm. Afghanistan. Yeah, Everyone knows him. And uh, when- uh, He deserves it. And he deserves that. Yeah. Definitely. And he deserves that. And uh, me and you as journalists, uh, so this is our responsibility. We don't have guns and arms to go and fight with the terrorists. Our pen, our camera, our newspaper is our own guns. So let's fight through that way. So let us work over this issue to follow that uh, what happened with Sardar's case, what happened with the investigation which the Afghan security officials did. There had to have been multiple, many people behind this exactly. for something so big to have happened in such exactly. a well guarded. Exactly. Yeah. But for me, that's all the more reason to do it. After that incident happened, I have never been in here. I'm sure you have never been here too. No way, are you kidding? I hate this place. It's where our nightmare happened. Yeah. To me, this is definitely amazing that such a VIP hotel 
with 19 cards, how it's possible that few young tourists can get inside this place. Everyone gets away with everything here. You can go and attack a hotel and kill people and kill children and yeah. nothing happens. So now we're gonna try to get answers from the Ministry of Interior because obviously they're the ones that were first on the scene and that should know more about who these people were and what happened and how it all was even allowed to happen. What do you think? What was uh, MOI's findings? Well, unfortunately, we don't have uh, exact findings because we submitted everything, the scene, and all those proofs and evidence to the NDS because they're responsible for the investigation of uh, these kind of complicated terrorist attacks. Isn't it too worrying for everyone that a place like Serena with more than 90 cards can be targeted? How did it happen? How is that possible that they, they were all in? They were all questioned. They were every security personnel who were at the Serena, the company or the personnel and everyone, or they were all investigated. The government doesn't hold the Serena accountable, it doesn't seem. They keep going on, they have their conferences, people go still. So it's just, they say, okay, yes, we got a new security company, and then that they're allowed to continue without paying any sort well, of... Well, it's the government. Uh, we're not able to comment on that. When Sardar was killed, some of the guys were saying, Courtney, John, this is Afghanistan, as if that makes it okay, you know? No. And I think that we should never accept that just because you have suffered attacks over the years and that they continue, that it's never okay. Well, the, the, the world should know that we pay a huge price and it's not okay. We should, Afghans should not be killed. Afghans um, have the right to live, you know, like millions of other people around the world. تا جارا به یک خبرنگار در کشور مثل افغانستان و در شهر مثل کابل فکر نکنم که زیاد خوشایند باشه معمولا مثل سایر خبرنگار ما تجربه از حوادث بسیار دلخراش دارم یا جنگ بوده یا انفجار بوده یا خون ریزی بوده شو آی گیو ان اگزامپل یا دات well, I mean, my personal emotions. Personal I don't have any emotion, you know. I'm like, well, like, <laughs> maybe you guys, I, know. <laughs> I uh, used to except, have, but now, you know, people die well, for reports. Well, if you want to say that, it's kind of it's, it's, No, I don't want to say it, you know. It's probably the wrong emotion to have in Afghanistan. <laughs> yeah. I think a lot of journeys do end up like uh, witnessing a lot of things and just becoming rather blase about it, but it's just news to them, that's all. Uh, how about uh, uh, talking about my concerns? Uh, from my family members, when something happens, first thing comes in my mind. I make sure that everybody at home is fine. Then I go to to, to my, you know, reporting. Yeah, let's do that. Yeah. That was the worst thing. Was when we were at the mosque before the burial here, and when the four ambulances came. What does the banner say? Freedom of speech in our country sucked the blood of thousands of our young journalists. It says Nilifar, five years old, Omar, four years old, uh, Sardar, and Hussein. Yeah. I think let's say goodbye to him now. <sighs> we all will die one day, you know? Yeah, but they weren't supposed to then. I Boko Haramas. I am a Boko Haram Mandim. What the Lily Kida Chiro Boko Haram Megum? Bishor Marajes Missa, Amisha, Hazor Mito, Amisha, the Koramekanaki Mustak to restore Bishor Saga 
نوت یس این دلیلی که بوکا حرام میگم این می است دیگه ببینید مثل یک تورست اعلان نمیداد ما دایی خانه 14 نفر زندگی میکنیم همراه با خانم زندگی میکنم که سال قبل هم رویش عروسی کردم بسم الله گفته روزی ما رو مشکلانیم قبول باشم قبول باشم سلام شطور سیگه خیلی دفتر هستم خانه امروز شف و نواخت هم میکنم اسمات هم پاشت هم میکنم طرف هایش تو جمعه هم خیلیت هست Courtney John, this is the security footage from the CCTV cameras from the night of the attack. When they go through the x-ray, like they don't, uh, all four of them must have beeped. Yeah. So right? And they, they have, didn't stop them. They didn't stop them. I'm not a security guy. When I see such people, they're so suspicious. Yeah, I know. Young guys with unusual clothes in such a place. Right. It, it happens when they see that you're not, for example, normal yeah. or something strange. Yeah. They will ask you that we are going. Uh, these uh, footages from the very beginning when they have a body search right. until here, it shows that no one is asking them that we are going. What is that? Now see here, this uh, CCTV camera moves. Right, that's amazing. They were tracking them the they whole time. Them, yeah. How did they not stop them? CCTV cameras, they do not zoom when it's normally somewhere, and it does not move around. But right. See? No, they're tracking these guys. Yeah. Look at that. Yeah, yeah. They were watching them. They were watching from them. From the minute they entered the front first gate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The CCTV footage of the attack actually happening inside their restaurant has disappeared, or they claim that it doesn't even exist. شکر <laughs> normal or routine articles but when we're investigating such a case so we definitely know that it's full of risks and uh, we know that um, like uh, there are hands of uh, big tourist groups behind this attack mm -hmm. but i also think that as journalists if we run away from every risk then nothing will ever exactly yeah. so so i can definitely sense even now that the risk yeah. is there and getting bigger because you know i mean we find out that there are people here that might have had links to it and uh, for you like uh, probably it could be you have your passport you you could leave probably but uh, for me it's damn dangerous i have to stay here i mean i cannot believe you call the taliban spokesman on viber like, what kind of world are we in? Yeah. <laughs> مرمی هایی که در وجود سردار احمد بوده و مطابقت میکنه با مرمی هایی که مجاهدین شما داشتن و اونا نشان میتن که فایر کردن بله مجاهد صاحب گفتم شما خی... چی فکر میکنین که کشته شدن کشتن سردار احمد فامیلش کار کی ها است اگر از مجاهدین شما نیستن I'm not going to 
مجھے سے ایک جن تشکر سلام I can't believe we have to address these people with respect. He said that if you will go and you will see that uh, video, so then everything else is clear for you. Okay, so even mm-hmm. though I don't believe him, um, mm-hmm. he's right and we do need to get that video. Yeah. yeah. <sighs> Nothing makes any sense. Uh, my question is that uh, how do you analyze such terrorist attacks from the intelligence point of view which happens inside Afghanistan? Around the world, when you enter a hotel of that stature in countries of conflict, they stop you. They say, what, what, what do you do inside? Because it would have taken very little expertise to detect that these guys had nothing to do in a five-star hotel. We talked with them why, and they said that uh, NDS particularly just handles uh, the case of uh, Salar and they will investigate it. Uh, you have been uh, just uh, leading NDS for a long time. Is there any enough procedure, investigative procedure at the NDS to lead such incidents to justice? Yes. Mm-hmm. But still we can see that such case, particularly Sardar's case, case uh, has not led to justice. You are right. I don't know why, but I don't know. What do you think? The mere passage of time, they think, kills a case. And passage of time has killed thousands of cases. If we don't have access to evidence and the evidence, the most crucial piece of evidence is the CCTV coverage. Do you think the investigation is competent enough to where someone knows the answer to this? I don't think it takes PhD in forensics if we have, if we see the, uh, the footage to come to a conclusion what happened. The question is not the final judgment, the question is What stops people from sharing that? Mm. Is something, someone, somehow involved that they want to hide and protect? Who killed who? الان دعا میکنم برای سردار دعا میکنم روح سردار خوش باشه شاد باشه As word gets out that we are investigating Sardar's murder less people want to talk We have one last person to try a senior member of parliament who might have some answers Four days after Serena attack that you were calling for the intelligence agencies to thoroughly investigate and hold people accountable but it doesn't seem that that's happened برنامه ریزی و طرح و ترایی میکنن یک برنامه را که ما بدبختانه گفته میتونیم که بعض گاردایی که مربوط به اوتل سیرینا میشد با او همکاری خود داشتن گاردا و کسانی که داخل اوتل مسئولیت داشتن دهی دست داشتن که او تانسته بودن راحت داخل اوتل سیرینا شوند و فعلا آمو در زندان هستن تقیقات جریان داره Jane. Jane asked. You're dressed too nice to go to a bombing. 
Ein Wort kommt für Stone. Ein Wort kommt When you get up close, you can tell how bad these things are. Ripped through the whole wall, which should be the most protected building. There's dead people here. Yeah, that's not really numb to it all. We have to get used with these things, you know. No, but we don't. <laughs> I don't want everyone Since to get used to these things. I know, but it needs to stop. After all this, we never got the missing CCTV footage from the restaurant and the hotel. And there's just too many dead ends. I go about my, my business, but it's just every single thing reminds me of him, really. It doesn't go away, even with time. It's... کار خبرنگانی من میخواییم که امروه های سردار را دارم تا ما میخواییم که همیشه اخ سردار را تفلش خانمش بایست یک بخش جاودان در زندگیم داشته باشه Wow. That's perfect. Nice, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> hey. Here, 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 here. <laughs> Have you ever had a lady drive you? So, you didn't leave, so you sit here. Yeah, I don't know. I, it's like you either are completely in love with this place or you hate it. Yeah. And especially after everything that happened, it's like I feel more connected here. I don't know, I mean, it's home. But what about you? I mean, so many people are getting U.S. visas now and leaving, and like most of your office left. So why? Yeah, most of my friends left, and I learned something different from Salah. Uh, he was always saying that uh, we have to live in this country, we have to build this country, and we have to make it as our own haven. This is our own country. If uh, Afghans themselves do not make it, then no one else will make or build this country for us. But you still feel that way even after what happened? Well. I have to, yeah. I feel that let's at least wait the capacity or the power, the talent which we at this got, let's use it for this country. I, uh, as I was born in here and I love to die in here, and this is definitely my biggest wish that when I die, I should be buried. Besides Sada, he was the main reason that made me to love Afghanistan. 